Good morning, thanks for joining me. I hope everybody's well today. This is a much requested video in recent times, so I thought as I had decent weather and decent natural light, I would sit down to film it today. Um, I do not like to use the words makeup tutorial because I am nobody's makeup. I am not by any stretch of anybody's imagination a makeup artist. Um, I don't even think I'm particularly good at uh, makeup, but I do very much enjoy makeup. Um, everything I learned, I've learned about makeup, I've learned from YouTube over the years. My, my time when I put my makeup on in the morning is my little bit of me time. I settle down at my dressing table with a YouTube video and all my makeup and and go into my own little world for 10 or 15 minutes and I really enjoy that little bit of time. So I'm going to show you a sort of fairly neutral what for me is an everyday makeup look but it probably seems quite full on there's a lot of products and stuff i will link everything that i use in the description box below and i'll talk you through it as i go i might speed up some sections where it's a little bit boring foundation blending and that sort of thing um and most of what i'm using here most of it not all of it but most of it is sort of drugstore prices as well um I think that's it. Let's get on with it. I'm going to pin back my hair and I'm going to do my least favourite thing, which is zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing. Right, I'm going to start. I do my skincare when I get up in the morning after I have my shower and um, usually I do my makeup about an hour after that just because that's how it pans out. But I have already done uh, my morning skincare. So I'm going to start by priming my skin. There's no particular primer that I recommend. I'm currently using this Laura Mercier one, which is expensive and I certainly wouldn't recommend particularly. Um, it's called the Pure Canvas Primer and it says it's blurring. It is silicone free if anybody cares about that but I feel like you can use a fairly good value for money primer which this certainly isn't and get away with it you, you I don't feel like you need to spend Laura Mercier levels of money on a primer I think this one came in an advent calendar or something similar I certainly didn't go out and spend money on a full size Laura Mercier primer it may it, do, it does feel a little bit blurring I can feel your skin feels quite nice after it's on and sort of got, got a slight slip, but not that silicone-y feel. Okay, next step, I like to get rid of these very dark, I don't have particularly bad bags under my eyes. I've got really dark bits in here and I like to blur those out. And I've just realized having got everything ready here that I haven't got a mirror. So bear with while I um, go and get myself a mirror. <laughs> Okay, so the product I use to brighten the inside of my eyes is this, which is Maybelline um, Instant Anti-Age Eraser. I think it's in the shade Brighton, but I will um, link, as I say, put link everything in the description box below. I just like to go right into the corners of my eyes um, there, that inner corner bit. I've got quite deep set eyes as well. I'll pop that in there. And then I blend it with a little makeup sponge. Um, just to blend the edges out really and you can see already that has made a big difference to those inner bits of my eyes and really sort of um, brightened my eye area up right next is foundation i use this i have used it for a long time somewhere on my channel there is a um it's Foera, sorry I should have said that. Um, Foera coverage foundation is very, very good value for money. Somewhere on my channel there is a full review of this. I love it. I, I do dip in and out of other foundations as well. Um, but I like this one. You can also mix this with a little, if you want slightly lighter coverage, you can mix it with a sort of glowy liquid primer type product. Um, but today I'm just going to put this on by itself that's my color I don't I can't see I've got my glasses but I can't keep putting my glasses on and off <laughs> honestly the joys of getting old um that's the color I put it on the back of my hand and then I just dot it sort of onto the areas of my face and then I'm going to blend it out with a brush um 
this is the brush I use it's makeup revolution and it is the best foundation brush ever I love this so much I went and ordered two backups last year um, it's just honestly it's it's dense but it's soft it gives such a nice finish I will link this below as well um, and then I just start blending in I'm going to speed this up because it takes ages for me to get it how I like it What I've got left on the back of my hand, I then dab my brush into and any bits that I want to go over a little bit more. For example, I've got quite a lot of broken veins on my cheeks um, and quite a lot of redness on my nose. I just build up a little in those areas um, rather than slap it all on all at once. I find this good for just building up quite slowly. And then I will go down onto my neck as well, just with whatever's left on the brush. Um, just to blend that. Don't like my neck, not keen on my neck at all. Had a conversation or a chat, I made a video, not about my neck, about um, different parts of our body as we age on my Patreon channel. Um, and the conversation was really interesting. Um, uh, getting other people's viewpoints on um, bits of ourselves where sort of confidence as you age and um, bits you don't like about yourself and how, how you deal with it and um, I suppose I should say I haven't <laughs> I'm sure you can tell I haven't had any sort of filler or Botox or anything never say never um, but it's not a route that I've gone down I'm not not that keen on um the idea of it going wrong, I think, is probably what puts me off the most, really. But, um, right, that is my foundation done. Um, next, I like to set under my eyes because over the... Sorry, I've got hair on my face. Over the years, I have had many problems with mascara and eyeshadow transferring down onto my lower lid there and under my lower lash line, and I don't like it at all. And I just use a loose powder... Um, this is the Skin Food Peach Powder. Looks very white, but it's actually translucent. And this is so finely milled. It's just perfect. It doesn't sink too much into the wrinkles under my eyes. And I use this little sponge. It comes in a set of two. Again, this is Makeup Revolution. Just dip it in, tap it off, and just pop that under my eyes. It doesn't really matter if you get too much on there, because you can just flick any excess away with a brush so I'd like to make sure that that is well um, powdered then I'll just get a little brush and go over it just just to move anything that's um, sort of in the way or excess so to speak next is face powder and this is um, a higher end product I have to say it's the Laura Mercier candle glow I think it's got look me putting it right up soon my arms will not be long enough to put things that far away from me I won't be able to read them at all um candle glow sheer perfecting powder um I've introduced to this at the beginning of the year and I very much like it it just gives a sort of indefinable glow to your skin I use a big fluffy brush for this go all over it and then I sort of concentrate on the bits that get a bit glowy during the day, but generally all over my face. Um, and it just, it adds something. I can't tell you what it is, but it just pulls everything together and makes everything look healthy, I think. That's that. Um, next, I do bronzer. Um, I'm using this Beauty Pie one. I actually like... A, I feel like as we age, liquid and cream pr and gel products on our skin um, in terms of blusher and bronzer are very flattering. You don't want to layer up too much powder on your skin. I think as your skin ages, it, that can begin to look a little bit cakey and not great. But I, the only um, cream bronzer I've got is a very expensive one so I'm using this beauty pie one which is a powder one which is still very nice this is the quantum bronzer and I'm going to use 
this big fluffy brush that is slightly flatter I just swell that into there and I go under my cheekbones temples and forehead almost like a three pattern under your cheekbones then under your jawline just to define your jawline a bit um sorry hairs in my face again and the same on the other side blusher and this is a blusher that was introduced to me by a viewer look at how small it is it's great for popping in your handbag as well this is a cream blush it's a max factor one i forget the name and it's the miracle touch creamy blush it's in this really nice shade of pink i will link the shade and everything below this sort of mid pink color is such a flattering blush color as we get older it's sort of universally what's the word I'm looking for universally flattering to every skin tone I think um Wayne Goss was raving on about this sort of color and he knows everything about blusher so this sort of brush and just getting so I'm gonna just tap that off on the back of my hand in case there's too much and then I tend to go in high with blusher I think because our faces fall as we get older I like to go high and sort of a little bit up um Don't worry if it looks as though you've got too much blush on. Come back and look again when you've done your eyes because you might find that when you've got your eyes done that it balances everything out a bit better. Right, next I'm doing eyebrows. I'm using this little duo from Boots 17. Um, I have my eyebrows microbladed. I have them done about once every 18 months to two years. And I get into the stage now it's um, about 16 months since I had them done and I just need to fill them in a little bit um, having your eyebrows microbladed highly highly recommend um, just so you don't have to do anything to them for a year and then you just have to fill them in a little bit so I'm going to use a mixture of the powder on the left and the um, cream on the right on a that's the brush I'm using which has got quite a sort of firm brush quite dense and I'm just going to go in and fill in the bits that I feel need a little bit of extra help. Right, I like to contour my nose. I feel like my nose is quite big and I'm using this NYX um, Wonder Stick, it's called. Um, it's very easy. I haven't had this long and I haven't been contouring my nose long. But I've noticed in photographs of myself that I look... So I've got quite a big nose. I think your nose grows as you get older, don't you? I don't know. And so I'm going to put those two stripes, basically, down the side of it, as you can see. And then I'm going back in with this original sponge that I use, this little one, to blend out my um, eyes. And just blend that. I don't want to move the line, but I just want to blend it in to... I feel that just slims my nose down a little bit um, and then I'm just going to go back over it with the powder brush just to set that. I probably should have done that at a different stage but I forgot. Right next um, eyes, eye primer. I like to use an eye primer. I find it makes my eye shadow, that's the word I'm looking for, um, last longer. Just pop it on with a doe foot applicator. Um, this one is the Focus and Fix Revolution Eye Primer. They don't make that anymore. I haven't been able to get hold of it for ages. Um, so I'm probably going to try one of their others when I run out of that one. But um, just tap that in to set it and give it a couple of minutes. And while we give it a couple of minutes, let's talk about eyeshadow. So today I'm using this eyeshadow palette. It was I got it quite recently it's from makeup revolution and it was in the sale half price i hope it's still i'll link it below hopefully it still is um 
that is what it looks like it's fairly cool toned and it's fairly neutral i wanted to do neutral eyes today i think neutral eyes suit everybody not everybody as you get older wants to do a whole lot of color i know some of you say that you feel that you're too old for eyeshadow or haven't used it for a long time um i think if you're gonna give it a go neutral is probably the way to go to start with so this is quite well set out. You've got down here, you've got all matte colours and then the top bit is all shimmery colours. I tend to like shimmer on my eyelid just to brighten it up and make it pop. I feel like it gives me a fresher, slightly more youthful appearance. Um, but I like matte sort of everywhere else. So I'm going to start by going, let me see if I can bring you even further in. God, that's terrifying. I really don't like it at all. Um, I'm going to start with, just let me, with this sort of fluffy-ish but flat brush. It's difficult to show you that. Fluffy-ish but flat brush. What I will do is I will link a set of eyeshadow brushes that I had, I've got various different ones in here, but I bought a set from Amazon a while ago, really good value for money, and they are super good. All the ones that you see me use with the rose gold, which will be plenty of them during this, um, doing my eyes, are um, from a particular set that was really good, so I'll pop that in the description box below. But I'm starting off with this fluffy, flattish brush, and so to start with, we just want to contour the sort of the crease and above the crease of our eye just to give it some shape. And you want uh, eyeshadow that's not too dark, not too light, sort of a little bit darker than your natural skin tone. So any of these sort of shades down here, sorry, that's the camera's making these look darker than they actually are. But these sort of middle ones, there's a grey, a sort of beigey one and a slightly darker beigey one there. So I'm going to go for the slightly darker beigey one. This is hard to do without a mirror. Let me just... And I'm bringing it in sort of just above my crease just to create a sort of contour and um, a bit of shape to my eye. I'm not going too far into the inner corner. I'm going sort of two thirds of the way in. Everybody has different eye shapes, of course. You will get to know. It, sometimes it's difficult. I try to do this with a light hand because as your skin gets older, it sags. I try not to pull my skin to do eyeshadow because I feel like it, it can distort where the skin is on your eye. I prefer to leave it loose and just go with a very light hand. Over the top of that, I'm just gonna pop a little bit of the gray just to Right, that's in place. I'm then gonna blend big fluffy brush and just go all over that just to blend it out um, and make sure the edges aren't harsh. They shouldn't be because it's a very sort of neutral, not too dark colour, but that's what we do there. So we've got a little bit of shape. I'm then going to choose one of the shimmery colours to go on my eyelid. I'm going to start with this one probably, maybe a bit of that one in the corner to and I'm going to pop those on with you can do these with your finger if you want to I'm going to go with that sort of fairly flat brush like that really pretty champagne -y beige color And I've gone across about two thirds of the way across the eyelid from the inner corner with that. I'm then going to go to a slightly darker um, 
shimmer i'm gonna try this one up here and i'm gonna use my finger just got my little finger dipped into that and just go across that outer part of that sort of from the middle of the lid onwards just that was my stomach crumbling if you could hear that clearly it's time i went and got some breakfast <laughs> that's what you've got now um what you can do but is not essential at all is go into a very bright white i'm going to go with that one which is super shimmery uh, or you can do it with a matte white if you prefer and just go right into that inner corner of your eye just with a tiny bit of that and that will really brighten up that inside corner not too much just a tiny bit and then again with the fluffy brush you can just brush over that to make sure there's no excess in there again that, that brightens it up do you know this looks so much nicer in the mirror than close up in the um, camera window right i'm now going to darken up the outer corner um this can be problematic as we get older because of the saggy skin it's not always easy practice makes perfect and i'm going to go with um this one here this darker sort of gray taupey color um swell my brush into that i'm using the big fluffy brush you can use something a little bit smaller if you feel um you don't want to put to it and i just go onto that outer part of the lid and up a bit with a very light hand you don't you can add more you can't take it off of course the same on the other side and I find because I'm old and I've got quite saggy skin it doesn't need an awful lot of blending it's more placing it in the right place it does need some blending don't get me wrong but getting it in the right place is the most important thing um and not too much of it so that's that now going to get a cleaner brush i've got many clean brushes in here that will do um and again a fluffy brush and again just go around the outside and blend that now again with this very stumpy brush if you want to highlight under your brows none of this is entirely necessary but i'm using a matte white down here um just on the end of that brush i'm going underneath the arch of my brows again i feel like this just lifts everything a little bit and brightens it up doing that on both sides i don't always do this it's because this is a i'm just showing you all the different things that i do do occasionally um but certainly not an essential step at all some people say as you get older you don't you shouldn't put anything underneath the eye i like to i feel like it frames my eye i use this brush which is a very um half circle brush it's very short is what i'm trying to say and very dense um, nice and hard it doesn't blur too much which is good i'm going back into that darker gray color um that i did in my outer corner and I'm just going directly under the bottom lash line about two-thirds of the way across now this final eyeshadow step is with this which is a very fine slanted brush it's going to go into the black there and i like to use that under underneath and i like to use that underneath my top lash line into sort of the roots of the lashes i'm going to do one eye and you'll be surprised at how much this makes a difference in terms of defining the eye i need to stop talking so i can't talk and do this
So this eye's done, that eye's not. Can you see the difference just from that one bit of black eyeshadow? Really defines the line, the eye. That is my eyes. Right, I'm gonna do mascara off camera. It's the Boots 17. This is my current favorite mascara, Boots 17 Extreme Extension Lengthening Mascara. So I'll do this off camera and come back. Right, mascara is done. Quite pleased with that. Finally, lipstick. I'm using this one, which I'll put my glasses on now and tell you. It's by Bella Pierre. It's the one I pulled out in a vlog last week and the colour is Catwalk. And um, somebody said how nice it is and asked for the... Um, oh, the, the shade name. Mm. There we are. All done. Remember my mother, my grandmother, blotting their lips on a tissue still something people do. I don't tend to do it I think it's meant to make it last longer but um anyway that's my makeup um as I say I will link everything in the description box below I hope that was useful or enjoyable or at least something <laughs> um, if you've got any questions leave them in the comments as I say I'm no makeup artist I just enjoy it I get a lot of pleasure out of putting makeup on and uh, that's what life's all about isn't it let's do the things we enjoy thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one bye bye